Hey everyone, welcome to our intro to linear equations review. So we're going to review standard form of a linear function, um, finding the zero of a linear function, and then also how to calculate slope and all that good stuff. Ready? So first one, which equations are linear? Select all that apply. So basically it's, in a, it's a linear equation if it can be written as ax plus by equals c which is standard form of a linear equation. Maybe I have to rearrange an equation to look like that, which is fine. But if I can make it look like this form, then it's linear. So when I look at the first problem, 4x plus y equals 8, that is totally in standard form. That is definitely a linear equation. x equals negative 4. Well, x equals negative 4 just simply means that it's x equals negative 4. If I don't see any y, that would mean that my b is just 0, and that's why I don't see it at all. So x equals negative 4. Awesome. Next one, y equals 3x minus 2. So y equals 3x minus 2. Well, let's just think. I could rearrange this. I could subtract 3x on both sides and make this equation negative 3x plus y equals negative 2. Oh, 8 can't be negative. All right. So then if I divide everything by negative 1, I end up with this equation. Definitely a linear equation. The next one, y equals x squared minus 6. There's no exponents in standard form. So if I ever see an exponent here, especially like an exponent of 2, 3, anything greater than that, it is definitely not linear. 4 divided by x? No, that's not linear because a is supposed to be multiplied by x, not divided by x. So that would not be linear. 3xy minus 5 equals 8. Again, no, if you see x and y side by side being multiplied, they are not linear. That's not a linear equation. And the last one, y equals 7 is also good for the same reason that x equals negative 4 was good. Um, if I'm looking at y equals 7 and I have the equation y equals 7, well, then that just means that a must have been 0, and we don't write 0x. It would just be y equals 7. So those four are good. Number two, the equation y equals negative 5x plus 2 written in standard form is. So if I want to rearrange this equation and put it in standard form, I want it to look like ax plus by equals c, which means that the x needs to be on the same side of my equation as my y. So I'm going to go ahead and add 5x on both sides because that was a negative 5x. And so when I do that, I now have 5x plus y equals 2. So 5x plus y equals 2. Just by taking this negative 5x, adding it to the other side, makes it positive, and that's my answer. Number 3, the equation 3y equals 2x plus 6 in standard form. All right, so there's definitely more than one way to do this. I don't want to show you one way and then have you think that that's got to be it. Okay, so I know I want my x to be on the same side as my y, so let's say I subtracted 2x on both sides to get negative 2x plus 3y equals 6. But the rule is that a should not be negative in standard form. So if I have a negative a, I'm going to divide everything by negative 1, which then would leave me with 2x minus 3y equals negative 6. 2x minus 3y equals negative 6. Now, if you wanted to do that a different way, let me show you a different way right next to it. So if I take 3y equals 2x plus 6, and let's say I subtract 3y, I move the 3y to the other side, and subtract 6, send it to the other side. Well, if I subtract 6, it would be negative 6 equals 2x. If I subtract 3y and send it to the other side, it would be negative 3y. Notice that this answer I get doing that is the exact same as this. So you can do things a little bit differently um, and get the same answer. Number four, find the intercepts of the equation 2x minus 3y equals 6. All right, so first, to find the x-intercept, what we do is we set y equal to 0. So if I set y equal to 0, basically I'm just crossing that out. And my equation is just 2x equals 6. Well, if 2x equals 6, then that means x equals 3. And so my x-intercept is 3, 0. Okay, what if I... Let me just erase what I crossed out there. What if I now want to find the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept means you set x equal to 0. And if x is 0, that's just now completely gone. And the equation you're left with is negative 3y equals 6. If I divide both sides by negative 3, I end up getting y equals negative 2. And so the y-intercept is at 0, negative 2. 
So 3, 0, 0, negative 2. Next one is find the x and y intercept of 3x minus y equals 6. So I'm going to go through the same thing. I'm going to find the x intercept, and then I'm going to find the y intercept. So first, to find the x intercept, you let y equal 0. Well, if y equals 0, that whole thing would be gone. I'm just left with 3x equals 6, which means x equals 2. So my x intercept is at 2, 0. I'm going to erase what I crossed out to do the next one. If I want to find the y-intercept, that means set x equal to 0, which means x is completely gone. I'm left with negative y equals 6. Well, if negative y equals 6, then positive y equals negative 6. So my y-intercept is at 0, negative 6. So I've got 2, 0, and 0, negative 6. Awesome. Number 6, the equation 5x plus 3y equals 60, represents the number of bags of popcorn x, so x is popcorn, and pretzels y, so I'm just going to abbreviate. That can be bought with $60. If no bags of popcorn are bought, so no bags of popcorn means that if I don't buy any bags of popcorn, zero bags of popcorn, how many bags of pretzels y can be bought? So basically, this is just finding the y value. If I buy no popcorn, that's gone. I'm left with 3y equals 60. Divide both sides by 3, I end up getting y equals 20. So that means 20 bags of pretzels can be bought. Number 7, finding the zeros of a function means to find the, well, to find the zero means to find the x-intercept. Finding the zero means if I was looking at a graph, I want to know when does this graph cross the x-axis, the x-intercept? And the next question, to find the zero, well, to find the x-intercept, to find any x-intercept ever, is when we set y equal to zero. So to find the zero means to find the x-intercept. And the way you find the x-intercept is you let y equal zero. So now for question number nine, when it asks you find the zero of y equals negative 5x plus 20, well, to find the zero means to find the x-intercept. And the way we find the x-intercept is to set y equal to 0. So I go ahead, I plug in a 0 for y. I now go ahead and solve my equation. So I have numbers on both sides, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract 20. So now I have negative 20 equals negative 5x. Divide both sides by negative 5, and we end up getting x equals 4. So the 0 of this function is x equals positive 4. Number 10, same skill. Find the zero of y equals 100 minus 2x. So to find the zero means to find the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, we set y equal to zero. So this would look like zero equals 100 minus 2x. I have numbers on both sides. I go ahead and subtract 100 on both sides. So now I have negative 100 equals negative 2x. Divide both sides by negative 2 and I end up getting x equals 50. Awesome. Number 11, so now we've got some slope questions. So our slope formula, when you have two ordered pairs, x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2, the slope formula is that you do y sub 2 minus y sub 1, and you divide it by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So in these first two ordered pairs, negative 3, 5, and 4, negative 7, if I want to calculate my slope, I would do y sub 2 minus y sub 1. So my y sub 2 is negative 7, so this would be negative 7 minus y sub 1, which is 5, over x sub 2, 4, minus x sub 1, which is negative 3. So now when I do this problem, negative 7 minus 5, is negative 12. 4 minus a negative 3 really means 4 plus 3, which is 7. I can't simplify it, and so that's my answer, negative 12 over 7. Same thing for the next problem. So I'm going to keep my formula here, but now I'm going to simply um, erase out my values, and I'm just going to set this up the same way. So now my new ordered pair is 4, 5, and negative 1, negative 2. So ready when I plug these in, it's y sub 2, which is negative 2, minus y sub 1, which is 5, over x sub 2, which is negative 1, minus x sub 1, which is 4. 
Negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So this would be positive 7 fifths. Number 13, another slope problem, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to erase my numbers. That way I can fill this in with no problem. So my ordered pair is 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 6. So already I do y sub 2, so negative 6, minus y sub 1, which is another negative 6, over x sub 2, which is negative 8, minus 4. All right, well, negative 6 minus a negative 6 it really means negative 6 plus 6, which is just 0. And negative 8, divided by, uh, negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12. 0 divided by any number, well, not 0, is just 0. When 0 is in your numerator, your answer is just simply 0. Number 14, what is the slope of the line shown in the graph? So here, when I look at this graph, I don't have to do a formula even. I just count rise over run. So it's rise over run. Rise is the vertical change. If I start here at P, negative 3, 2, I'm not going to go up to go to Q. I'm going to go down. And so I'm going to count how many units I go down. 1, 2, 3. So it looks like I have to go down 3 units. So my rise is a negative 3. After I go down 3 units, 1, 2, 3, then I'm going to go to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, positive 5. That's it. My rise over run is negative 3 over 5. Now, I always tell my students to go left to right, but let's say you were to go right to left. You wanted to go backwards from Q back to P. Well, if I did the rise over run that way, I would go up 3, 1, 2, 3. So that's a positive 3. But then if I go up 3, I have to go to the left 5, 1, 2, 3. 4, 5. And if I go to the left 5, that's a negative 5. Well, now look, negative 3 fifths is identical to ne uh, negative 3 over 5. Uh, five over, 3 over negative 5. They're the same thing. It doesn't matter where the negative is. They're both just negative 3 fifths. Number 15. This one is nice because it has the actual labeling of rise over run. So if I wanted to figure out the graph here, the slope here, I could see that I'm rising 1, running 2. So it's rise 1, run two, rise one, run two, rise one, run two. So that means my slope is just simply one over two. If a line has a slope of zero, then the line is. So now when I talk about slope with my students, I say, listen, the floor you're walking on, like your floor, you're not going uphill, you're not going downhill. That's what a slope of zero looks like. The floor is a horizontal line. So slope of zero is horizontal. If I'm increasing going up, like you're walking uphill, that's when the slope is positive. If I'm going downhill, because we read grass from left to right downwards, that's a negative slope. So you can walk on a floor, be at a slope of zero. You can go up, you can go down, but you can't walk on a vertical surface. You can't work on a vertical surface. That is undefined. There's no numerical value for it. Okay, so if a line has a slope of zero, it's horizontal. If a line has a slope that's undefined, it is vertical. Even think about it, right? Like this is zero. I'll do it like this. This is a slope of zero, and then this is, I'm trying to make it the right way for you. It's like opposite to me. But like if it's going up, 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 we would never have a value that's so steep that I would know what that vertical line is. We just don't have a numerical value for that slope. Number 18, which graph equations have graphs that are increasing? Select all that apply. So a graph that would be increasing should look like this. It should have a nice positive slope. So equations that have a nice positive slope, y equals 3x, that's a nice positive slope, definitely going up. y equals 0.5x, nice positive slope, that's definitely increasing. y equals negative 4x, if I have a negative slope, that would be decreasing, so not good. And then y equals x, there's really a 1 in front of that x, and it's positive, so it's definitely going up. Number 19. In 2010, calculators cost $12. In 2020, they cost $15. What is the rate of change? So what we actually have here is we have two ordered pairs. We have 2010, 
comma 12, and then we have 2020, comma 15. It's actually two sets of ordered pairs. If I do my slope, I would do y sub 2 minus y sub 1, so 15 minus 12, over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, so 220 minus 210, which brings me to 3 over 10, which is really just 0 0.3, which is 30 cents. The price went up, so it's a 30 cent, per, uh, 30 cent increase per year. Number 20, last question. What value of y gives the line passing through 4, 2 and negative 8, y a slope of negative 1 fourth? So think about this. The slope formula is that m equals, we, well, we know what m is. It's negative 1 fourth. That slope should be equal to y minus 2, so y sub 2 minus y sub 1, over negative 8 minus 4. So I have to figure out what y is. So I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. So now this is negative 1 fourth equals y minus 2 over negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12. We now just have a proportion. And when you have a proportion, that means I would do 4 times y minus 2. And I would set that equal to negative 1 times negative 12. And then I just solve my equation. So it's really just setting up a proportion then solving. So now I have 4y minus 8 equals 12. Add 8 on both sides. We get 4y equals 20. Divide both sides by 4. And 20 divided by 4 is 5. And that's it. My answer is just positive 5. Awesome. I hope this video was helpful. Good luck on your quiz. Bye, guys.